Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another episode of Talking Halos. I'm your host today, Jared Timms, and I am joined alongside my co-host, my partner in crime, Nate Green. Nate, how you doing? I'm doing well, Jared. How about you? I'm not doing too bad. I'm not doing too bad at all. I'm trying, struggling here, struggling to figure out what we're talking about today. But no, no, no. The Angels are the Angels are still playing well. Like I said, after a tough sweep, the Angels went home and decided to win ball games again. You know, it is what it is. That's how baseball works. For the intelligent Angels fan, they know that this team is playing well. And they are. You know, that sometimes streaky things happen. This team might be a little bit streaky, though Justin Upton is not on the team anymore. You're welcome. Speaking of that, did you see Justin Upton did sign with the uh, Seattle, Seattle Mariners? Mariners, yes. The big one. What, what is that, like the 15th Mariners uh, guy, the or 15th Angel scrub the, the Mariners have signed? Scrub, uh, future, future possible Hall of Famer, Justin Upton? No, 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 don't even put that in now. Uh, but but no, there was a list out today that was like, how many guys have the Mariners signed that have been cut or released by the Angels? And I think it's like 10. Michael like, Morin, Justin Upton. Keenan Middleton? Keenan Middleton. I feel like Chris Pettit. Chris Petit, remember that name? Yeah. I, I feel like that was there. I'm telling you, if you really like dove into this, there would be a bunch Ooh. of there'd be there's, a bunch of names. There's an out there's an outfielder that just destroyed the Angels. Raul Abanez. Yes. There was another outfielder that just destroyed the Angels. And he was like would he was like a triple A or type of guy. I don't know. I can see him. I'm gonna see if I can find that list for you to see. If I can get him. I don't know. I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to get him, but I mean it's interesting. I mean, you, you look at the trends and that's just how it works. Like Depoto's gonna take his guys back. Uh, I'm sure, you know, you look at you look out in uh New York. Six. Sean Fig, did you look at you look at Andrew Morales, Casey Koch. How many of those how many timeouts? How many of these guys have are actually with the Poto? Though is my question. Oh no no, the, it it was just saying. Uh, it, it says our history of signing mediocre ex Angels continues. That's what the Mariners fans are saying. It says uh, Figgins, Morales, Kochman, Washburn, Spezio, Middleton, Trumbo, Kennedy, Upton. There's there's they're probably a couple more. they're missing, but it but it is hilarious. Yeah, Morin. Yeah, there there have been more for sure, but I mean, yeah, it's kind of funny how that works, right? I mean, you look at uh, you look at New York and Alex Claudio in New York now, back with Billy Epler, and I'm sure you look in, you know, you, you look at the Angels, and there are some Milwaukee guys there, and there are some there are some Atlanta Brave guys there. There's just how it works, but um, but yeah, super interesting. Yes. I don't know. Let's talk. Let's let's actually dive deep into this conversation here. I really, we were talking about this off to, off the record. We need to bring this kind of on the record here. Does Artie Moreno have to sell the Angels now? You're really going to put this on, okay? Um, yes, we're doing it. I, 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 we're not even. We weren't even debating it. Yeah, I, no, I wasn't I, debating it. I, we're, we're talking about this. Like I know you. I don't know like, how many scandals this guy can can continue to dodge but it's like he's running for president and he continues to dodge scandal after scandal it's unbelievable it's impressive it, it really is uh this is probably the third major scandal that you could argue that he's been able to dodge obviously one of them being the Tyler Skaggs. oh no Tyler Skaggs that's right yeah not deflate gate no no Tyler I mean yes Tyler Skaggs is, is going to be Skaggs. one of them that's always going to be brought up especially you know he's in charge it's going to be his house and if he doesn't know what's going on in his house then probably shouldn't be uh in charge of a major league organization I guess mm -hmm. um the other thing that's going to be talked about is how he has handled the minor leagues you, you can say like yeah. what there there has been um uh, issues with guys living in their cars and, and things like that in the minor leagues. And he just hasn't really taken care of them. Obviously he's not the only one to do that, but um, anytime you spend as much money as the angels do and you don't spend any money in the minor leagues, that's going to be brought up. So it, it was a big story, at least for a couple of days. So I, I would say that's another scandal. He kind of dodged. And now this one with buying the parking lot and may or may not have been shady. So three big scandals that he's been able to continue to hold on to the angels. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if you compile that with the lack of winning 
again, I mean, I know that's not a scandal, but the lack of winning, you know, yeah, that doesn't help. It doesn't help. Um, you do look at how much the angels have grown over since he's uh, bought the team. And that's, that's one plus thing for, for that. But regardless, yes, you are a hundred percent, right. There have been a lot of weird things go on. And, and I feel like we've talked about this a lot. Like the angels are cursed. I think it's just plain simple as that. I think the angels are cursed. Like I really do. I don't know. I don't know who cursed them. I don't know what it was. I don't know if it's the land that they're on, which makes no, a lot of sense. They, they've, they've Indian reservation, possible Indian reservation. They've won a world series on that land. You're fine. That's fine. That's true. There's a world series on that land, which is fair, but I, I don't, I know the angels are cursed. I know that. Like, I don't know what it is. I don't know. It's not the curse of the Billy Goat. It's not any of that stuff. That something or someone cursed the angels. Not even a joke. Like, no jokes. In your curse. No. I mean, you don't have to believe in it, but like, I truly believe it. Like, something is going to happen this year that affects the angels in a completely negative way, and they won't make it to the playoffs. They're fan- they're off to way too good of a start. Don't say that. Well. We're not sure on that. He he's just making things up. So, whatever. But uh, the only the only guy that I could really compare Artie Marino to would be another sport, and it's Dan Schneider. I mean, of the Washington whatever Commanders football team, Redskins, whatever you want to call them, uh, he's been able to get away with scandal after scandal after scandal, and he still owns the Washington football commander team thingy i got got some more i got some more names here for you oj simpson uh but but he wasn't able to play ray lewis okay kind of Mm -hmm. tom brady his scandal was not an issue deflate gate they won the game by 45 like i don't want to hear that's an issue aaron hernandez by the time they found out he was arrested and never able to play again. So not exactly the same. That's why that's why I'm comparing Schneider to Marino because they're both owners of a football or a, a professional sports team. And they've both been able to hold on to their teams with all the scandals that have come up, come up with both teams. So you can look at players and players are always going to be a little bit different. Like, you know, um, Julio Rios, Trevor Bauer, Rolls Chapman, you're always going to, Mar- Marcelo Zuna, you're always going to get the different, uh, different answers for different players. But when it comes to an owner being able to get away with so many scandals, that is, that doesn't happen very often. I mean, no. the, the last one of them that I can remember is the Clippers owner who had the issue and he sold the team like right away after that. Yeah. So, so there have been issues in the past with owners where leagues have basically been able to tell the owner, like, hey, we can't have this anymore. Like, you got to go. I, I don't think Major League Baseball would do that to him because I just don't think that that's how it's going to go down. But it, it is interesting how much has come up and, and how much he's been able to, I guess, stay out of it. I don't even know if he's out of it. Like his name's all over this, but it's still like nobody's well, nobody even even bringing his name up. How often do we see him in the media as well? You know? Oh, never. Like, like he refuses to do interviews. That's a, that's a big thing too. Is he yeah. refuses to do interviews, and that's probably why too, because he yeah. doesn't want any bad press. So he's very he's he's very smart. Let's say it. let's let's put yeah, it that way. Like that's fair. And I think that we've. We've, we're in agreement here, and I know a lot of people don't agree with this. Artie Moreno is a fantastic businessman. Yes, one a of the best bad baseball owner. Like we've said this many yes. of times. Like I like baseball owner. No, thank you. Businessman. Eh, pro- yeah, like I would I would sit down with him and talk business. Like I would love to pick his brain about business. You know. Yeah. Um, There's a reason he's rich enough to own a professional sports team. Mm-hmm. Like exactly. he, he was smart with his money in a couple different places. So. Yes, I, I understand that, but I don't know. It's it's very impressive to hear how many different things he's been able to dodge, and I don't know how much longer he can keep this up. I think I was at – actually, I think I was at uh, Artie Moreno's last inter, um, last public interview, Trout's press conference. I think yeah, I was, was going to say it had to be ones. a pool holes or Trout press yeah. conference. Yep, and I think I, I still – yep, I was – I think I still I, – uh, I was one of the last ones to ask him a question, speaking of that. So there there is that, like – 
I don't, Look I don't, at you. I know. And like thinking about it now, that might have been like, what happened first, Trout or Otani? Trout, Trout happened second, right? The uh, Trout extension. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that would probably be one of the last times that he's done anything in the public. You know, like he didn't even answer. He was at spring training this year, but he didn't answer any questions. Like there was a, the picture of him going around and oh, Artie's here and at his home basically. Like he yeah. doesn't leave Arizona. Um, what happened to Ned Cletty? Is that he had very to sell the team? Yeah, he had to sell the team. That's the last thing. That's the last time that I can remember like an owner having to sell the team. And I think they they made him sell the team because of a, like the divorce or or something like that. It yeah. was some weird on the side. But yeah, um, I am very intrigued to know what happens here. Like Artie Moreno has a lot of money, but like, yeah, this I'm in, I'm intrigued. This is going to get very. This is going to get super. Like especially since Sadu. Um, to do resign he did today. resign today yes yeah that's gonna that's that's gonna get very interesting on Artie's part for sure um but especially hey. since there's tapes out and everything this this is, could be this could be watergate in, in major league baseball Ooh. what do we call it what do we call in this the Artie gate Anna- <laughs> Artie gate anaheim gate yeah anaheim one gate, of those it's very interesting, uh, though. I'll it say it that. will be this. It will definitely be interesting to see how this thing plays out, especially with the Angels trying to possibly make the playoffs. And you know, oh, it's one thing after another thing. Like this is this be, is where the Angels are cursed, right here. Like this could is. Could you like, could you imagine July? The Angels are trying to add a contract, and Artie Marino is in issues and can't really add payroll because of this. There you go. I'm not Nate, saying what that's, was I say, what was I saying? Like maybe I'm not three minutes ago, and you were like, happen, and you were like, "Well, there's no curse, Jared. There is no curse. You just explained my my. You just like it's possible. It is what I said. It's possible. I don't say that's going to happen. I just said Angels it's need possible. some bullpen. The Angels need some bullpen help. They go to uh, Pittsburgh. They get what's his name, so and so, the guy who wears the uh, eye mask. You know. Okay. I'm telling you, Bender. man. They are cursed. Bender. They are cursed. We'll really see. Cursed. It is what it is. All right. So, um, yeah, that's that on on that. Um, let's get on to a little bit of Angels baseball. Like, we kind of just, you know, beat around the bush there a little bit. Angels are playing some good baseball after coming off of that tough, tough sweep of the um, – of Texas them, Rangers. obviously. Yeah, the Texas yeah. Rangers they played. Um, but they took two or three from Oakland. It was just good to see. But again, Oakland is running out a triple A team, and I will continue to say that. But did I get points? You, I think I got points. No, you said sweep. Get out of here. You said one of three. Yeah. So I took I, I actually like if you if you want to go by the prices right rules, I won at that point. You were oh sure. you went over. Yeah, exactly. So um, you can't go over the the number, which Technically, that's the Price is Right rule. But anyway, they, they took two of three, which was good to see. Um, see R- Russell Iglesias get some saves. That was also good to see. You know, get him back. Maybe, yeah, maybe get some Angel fans to relax a little bit. Uh, Silseth threw the ball okay. You could you could tell that he uh, was a rookie. Was, yeah, you could tell it was his second start in a row against the same team, and that's the the one thing that sucks about the six man rotation full five-man rotation you probably don't run into that uh six-man rotation you run into it more likely than not so angels win two of three though good good series good things obviously some bad things taylor ward getting hurt again um jose rojas getting dfa'd probably the worst news out of all this that that is bad news um the 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 other thing that I would like to talk about is Sunday. Patrick Sandoval threw an absolute gem. Taylor Ward was unavailable. Okay. That leaves two outfielders on the Angels roster for a Sunday afternoon game. If you if you want to get technical, that there's two Angels outfielders. You can say, you know. I guess you could say Tyler Wade has played the outfield, you know, four times in his life. You can say the, you know, Michael Lorenzen has played outfield in his life, but he pitched the day before you didn't want, you didn't want him to have to play the outfield after starting the night before it was so bad. Noah Syndergaard was taking fly balls before the game on Sunday because it was like, Oh, if something happens, there's nobody to catch a ball in the outfield. 
So uh, my question is. Juan Lagares is my answer. Why is he not on the big league roster? Like uh, if this is, if this is know. a thing, why, why is there not a fourth outfielder? The angels haven't had a fourth outfielder in a long time. I think since they sent Joe Adele down, they haven't really had a true fourth outfielder and it, it almost cost them. Like I know they won the game and I know things went well, but it, it ended up making a difference. Sandoval was cruising in the eighth. Tyler Wade has trouble with the sun, you know, not really accustomed to playing the outfield gives up a double because, you know, didn't really see the ball too well off the bat. Next thing you know, Sandoval gives up a run and it's like, Ooh, Hey, Oakland has a shot. Now there's a runner on they're down by three and tying runs on deck. We have to get Ryan Tapera up. We're going to have to get Russell Iglesias up instead of, you know, putting a normal outfielder, Juan Lagares out there. Juan Lagares makes the play. Patrick Sandoval probably throws a, a CG, a CGSO, and then you're you're going, wow, the Angels really needed that um, to, to help the bullpen out and going into an off day, making sure everyone's really fresh for a Texas team who seems to be the nemesis of the Angels this year. So I, I just want to know why Juan Lagares is not on the Angels. I know people are going to be calling for Joe Adele, which is fine. I, I wouldn't personally have Joe Adele on the big league roster if he's going to play, you know, once a week, maybe twice a week. But Juan Lagares is a professional. Like, he can play twice a week and not be upset. So why is he not on the major league roster? I have no no idea. I'm going to be honest there with you. Yeah, you, got, you got me beat on that. Yes, you do need you do need outfielder. Um, Juan Lagares is my answer to you um, on that, Aaron. Just yeah. – leave Aaron Whitefield there. Like you need a, you need an outfielder. Heck, I'll take Jose Rojas up there. Like, I know he's not an outfielder, but like you need somebody to play the outfield. Like for all intents and purposes, Tyler Wade is your second baseman. Andrew Velasquez is your shortstop. They are not outfielders. Nope. (laughs) Right. I mean, it's just as plain and simple as that. Like you, you need to figure out a way to run out a normal roster at some point. Plain and simple. And I'm I'm in full agreement with you, and I think it has to include Joe Adele. Like I just don't know. Like I would have rather seen Jared Walsh play right field. Yeah, Walsh and Wright's fine. At least Walsh has played like outfield at Angel Stadium multiple times. Where yeah. like Tyler Wade, I love Tyler Wade. I'm a huge Tyler Wade fan. You know that. But if Tyler Wade's playing outfield multiple times a week, there's a problem. And I think that we could have had, you know, Duffy play first base. We could have had Rangifo. And um, and Velasquez up the middle. You can have Wade and Ringifo, Wade and Velasquez, whatever you want to do. But simple. Yeah, it's really not that hard to get Jared Walsh in the outfield. It's a simple and game. I, I don't know. It it was just something that I wanted to bring up. Uh, you saw Sandoval's frustration when he was taken out of the game. Uh, I think he could kind of sense that he had a shot at a complete game shutout. Obviously, he's a competitive pitcher. He wants to throw the complete game. He wants to shut out. He wants you know, to continue to pitch well. And I honestly, you, you saw him pissed off as he walked into the dugout. And it, I don't think he was pissed off he got taken out of the game. I would, I think he was pissed off that he gave up the run. Obviously, he's a little upset he got taken out of the game, but I think he understands that where they were at, it, it became a lot closer of a game. But I think he truly was pissed off that, you know, a major league player could not catch a fly ball. And that's what he was upset about. And I don't know. People are praising him for being this great teammate, competitor, things like that. And I think it's more of like, hey, bro, catch the ball. Like, I'm trying to compete. I'm trying to, you know, prove that I'm one of the best pitchers in baseball. And You compete you, you, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, plain and simple as that. I agree. So let's get on to a little bit of must-win action. I think these next two games are must-wins, especially with what we talked about in, you know, previous episodes of this is not going to get easy for the, any easier for the Angels. They have a very tough stretch in, of June, um, up until June now. But they do get a two-game break with the Texas Rangers. Hopefully a two-game break. Don't say break. break. Don't say break. They, they the Angels games. can't beat Texas. I know they well, can't. Oh, it's they not can't that beat they can't. Texas in Texas. They, they have had a tough time playing Texas, Texas this Texas. year. It's not that they can't beat Texas. They've had a no. tough time so far. Yeah. Like I said, like, two-game, eh. Is that a good, like, two-game, like, possible eh? Yeah, this is this is a tough series, and I think this is going to – if they have a tough time with Texas at home, 
this is going to make the next series with Toronto that much harder. Toronto's scuffling. They're playing okay baseball, not great baseball. I mean, they just they won two or three against Cincinnati. Uh, they're playing St. Louis in St. Louis, so they're going to have to come from St. Louis all the way to Anaheim, which will give them probably a day of travel day. Through, no, maybe Wednesday, or, or they could be playing an afternoon game Wednesday. Either way, they're probably not going to get a full rest day. And then if the Angels lose one of the two to Texas, that could that could easily lead into a, a much tougher stretch going into Toronto coming into their to their place. And I don't know. Toronto Toronto mashes. That's gonna be yeah. the one scary thing is they mash. Yeah, yeah, I like I like the way the Angels match up against Toronto. I can't say that right now they're matching up very well. Like we, we can probably discuss this on our next podcast. Um, but I do like the angel, the way the angels match up with the blue Jays. Like I guess I've said it before. I think the angels match up very well with, with almost every team minus how the Yankees are playing right now. I don't think anybody matches up with the Yankees. Um, uh, but, but yes, get back to the Texas Rangers series. I think it, it's definitely feels like a um, must two wins must sweep, uh, mm-hmm. must mini sweep, I guess is what you can say here. Uh, the angels get Dane Dunning and is it Ryan auto? Who is I it? believe so. I think it's Ryan Otto. Yeah, that sounds right. I don't know if it's right though. And they will counter with Noah Syndergaard and Reed Detmers. Of course, that means that Noah Syndergaard, I would assume, will not throw in the Toronto Blue Jays series unless he goes Sunday. But I don't even think he would go then. It's Glenn Otto. The Glenn uh, Ryan it Otto. Is Glenn. It's Ryan Otto. Uh-huh. Glenn Otto. I don't think he yeah, goes. Sunday. I, I don't think I don't think Syndergaard would go because that would be. His his next scheduled start would technically Monday. be Monday. <laughs> yeah, so I, it'll be it'll be interesting to see. Again, I don't think the Angels match up without throwing Syndergaard. I don't think they match up very well against the Jays. But again, we'll have Otani to see where the Jays get to throw. Um, so they will get to see Otani, which will be fun. Otani versus Vlad will be a fun fun matchup. But to get back to the Texas series, Syndergaard getting his redemption, I guess, hopefully. That's what, what you're looking for. He got one out last time, two outs last time. He faced this same Rangers lineup, and they're coming in with the pretty much exact same lineup. Cole Calhoun swinging a really good bat. He's coming back home. That'll be fun. Um, Corey Seager, Simeon still scuffling. So the, this is a winnable series for the Angels, and you have to win the series, and the only way to win a two-game series is to sweep. So – this is going to be a, a very, very important series. Reed Detmers has got to continue to pitch well at home. He's got to continue to to get better each and every start. That's all you can ask for him is, like, to get better every start. Like, obviously, he's not going to get better than his no-hitter, but he can show signs of improvement each time out where it's like, hey, he can command all four pitches in this outing. Hey, he can control the running game a little bit better. Hey, he can, you know, throw every pitch and every count. Like, Things that are showing that he is getting better um, because we don't want another Griffin Canning where it's like, hey, he's the same pitcher he's been since he got called up. Very true. Yes, development. Development's the name of the game. Seems like the Angels are doing that fairly well as of late. And, Nate, I think we need to make a T-shirt of that one. The only one – quote it, air quote it, the only way to win a two-game series is sweep. I like that. It's a fantastic shirt, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> it's not wrong it sounds weird but i mean am i wrong <laughs> no i love it i i would i would absolutely love that as a t-shirt that'd be fantastic so nate you got any final thoughts before we let everybody go besides uh, hopefully t-shirt? hopefully taylor ward can uh, get healthy and be back for the toronto series at the latest we'd love him to be back at least for the second game of the texas series it'd be tough for him to be back for the first one um speaking of that let me just throw this out there saw it on instagram um aaron whitefield did say um uh second second go around or something like that okay go angels so they're he i don't know be, if he, comes he up. might be coming up it makes it would make sense so yes. i saw that i was like eh, i don't want to say anything you know but um that does we'll make find a lot out of sense. we will find out yeah and then did he, get, um, did he get DFA'd though? He got DFA'd, didn't he? I, I don't believe so. I think he got sent down because of the COVID thing. He didn't have to get DFA'd yet. And they decided to DFA Jose Rojas. Good luck to him. Hopefully, 
I hope for him he gets picked up by a, a team that's not competing. Yeah. I think he deserves a chance to play at the major level every day and find out if he if he can do it. I know Angel fans would be rooting for him if he goes to Pittsburgh or Baltimore or somewhere like that and just gets to play 100 games in the major leagues and just find out if he can do it. So I, I'm root for him, nothing but the best for him. Um, we need Taylor Ward back. And looking forward to this Texas series. Absolutely. Absolutely. Two game sweep. Here we go. So guys, as always, I want to thank you all so much for listening to this podcast here at Talking Halos, making us the best podcast, Angels podcast out there. Uh, if you could subscribe wherever you're listening or watching us, hello YouTube again. Um, if you could go ahead and follow us on all of our social medias, you can follow myself on Twitter, Jared underscore Tim's Nate on Twitter at Nate Green 34. And guys, thank you so much for listening. Have a great rest of your day. Mm-hmm.